President, I hope the notes as have been posted and we're all here in person. Is there a motion to open the January term? So moved. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. How about a motion to open the February term? So moved. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, Bailiff, please open the board. All right. Now the county commission report is now in session for the February 2013 term with the Honorable Judge Chief Inch presiding. Please remain standing for the invocation. Uh, invocation today will be given by guest or commissioner Dan. Well, good morning. Reverend Timothy Gawla sent a short uh, bio that I will read. He's a priest of the Catholic Diocese of Dallas, a native of Tyler, Texas. He attended seminary in San Antonio, Texas, and in Rome, Italy. Ordained in 1958, he has had assignments in various schools and parishes in Dallas County. And since 1969, he has been pastor of Holy Cross Catholic Church in Oak Cliff. I would like to add the rest of the story. While at Holy Cross Catholic Church, he has presided at more than 6,500 masses and an untold number of weddings, funerals, and confirmations. He's the diocese's longest serving active priest and the longest at a St. Parish. He's also led mass at the VA Medical Center nearly every Friday since 1969. He's written for the Texas Catholic newspaper even longer, penning folksy pastoral columns drawn from his daily life. For his 75th birthday, the Reverend Timothy Gollop trans uh, transmitted his retirement letter as required for a priest reaching that age. Bishop Kevin Farrell of the Diocese of Dallas gave him a birthday gift, saying he he could continue as pastor of Holy Cross Catholic Church in South Oak Cliff. Part of that reward for Father Gala was to open a new 700-seat sanctuary for Holy Cross, built after 15 years of dogged fundraising, including raffles, bingos, and all other kinds of, of events. Besides his own history in making, Father Gala has been a part of history. Gallup's father was an Austrian immigrant who joined the U.S. Navy as a teen and moved the family from base to base. They were at Pearl Harbor, having just returned from church when the Japanese attacked on December 7, 1941. Gallup, then in the second grade, recalls his father grabbing a pistol and reporting uh, to a battle station. Also on November 22, 1963, Gallup was again part of history when he took a group of high school students from Bishop Dunn High School to Dealey Plaza to see President Kennedy. So as he honors us with a prayer, please welcome Reverend Timothy Gallup. Lord, I, I looked at this agenda and I know that uh, this court represents many people in the County of Dallas, and there are many agenda items. I saw transportation, bridges, roads, health, the West Nile virus, the flu, the epidemic, housing, crime, employment issues, and yet we know that this court has a sweet disposition before they start. <coughs> I was very pleased with the welcoming attitude of the officers and the court, and the people in this court, and we pray with King David, who had his own issues that this prayer of David in Psalm 100 would be the attitude of all who are here today. Psalm 100, a song for the thank offering. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Amen. Amen. 
position. Father God, I, I just want to thank you uh, over there. Most people may or may not know where that kind of is. Off of Barnaby Road, right next to A. Maceo Smith. And uh, you, you have been a real stalwart in that community. You have helped stabilize that community. And I, I just want to say thank you on behalf of my constituents and all of Dallas. And thank you, Commissioner, for coming back long over to Thank you. position of county extension agent after working both as a high school teacher and a police officer for the city of Nacogdoches, in addition to being a self-employed landscape design profession. And whereas county extension agent Fred B. Morrell has earned both a Bachelor of Science and a Master's degree in secondary education has performed admirably and creatively in the area of agricultural sciences. And whereas Fred D. Burrell has the distinction of being the first county extension agent in Texas and America to train <coughs> urban citizens to become Texas master naturalists, volunteers, and has trained in excess of 500 volunteers since 1998 and manage more than 170 active in the NTMN volunteers since 2012. And whereas in 2012, Fred D. Burrell and volunteers of the NTMN logged more than 16,000 hours, a value of $354,750 to the community and Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service they acquired resources, developed exhibits, co-created newsletters and fact sheets, trained and led donations that exceed over $1 million in value to Dallas County. And whereas Fred D. Burrell is the proud father of Fred III, Jamal, and Olivia, in addition to numerous youth that have, he has mentored and taught through the 4-H program, and so many other agricultural programs now therefore being resolved that the Dallas County Commissioner's Court does hereby recognize and extend sincere appreciation to Fred D. Burrell upon the announcement of his retirement after 22 exceptional years of service and being further resolved that we extend our best wishes as he transitions into the next phase of his life in hopes that he will continue to remain as relevant <coughs> and dedicated to the art of agriculture and the promotion of sciences rooted in the same. And I so move. Uh, uh, before you speak, Ms. Burrell, uh, Mr. Groom, anything you want to say about this, gentleman? I, uh, I've been in this industry for 42 years. I've worked for Fred for the past nine years as a colleague and a next door neighbor. Uh, Fred is a person that's very passionate about doing it right, doing it well. 
Uh, he is a father as I am. We both have three children, so we have a lot in common. I'm an undergraduate from Stephen F. Austin. He's from Nacogdoches. Uh, I appreciate the man. I appreciate what he's done for Dallas County. And we need the uh, Office of Dallas County, Texas A&M, and Equalizer Tickets, or wish him all of that in his future endeavors. Okay. Well, <coughs> Commissioner, Commissioner Price, Dr. Garcia, Judge Jenkins, Commissioner Cantrell, Dr. Daniel, thank you all very much. I really want to thank Dallas County and the commissioners and all the volunteers who <coughs> is one of our North Texas Master Nationals volunteers that have really contributed to my life, growing and maturing over the last 22 years. Uh, I have to thank there are certain commissioners that are no longer on the bench for allowing me to serve Dallas County and the Texas A&M Agri Life Extension Service on a one-year fellowship in Washington, D.C. So uh, thanks is really not good enough, but thank you very much. Uh, it's been fun. I've really appreciated it. I think we've done a lot of good work for the citizens of Dallas County. And I really strongly believe that the extension service can be more relevant to more people than ever before. So I ask that you all continue to support the extension service. I know you all will, because we do leverage the resources for Dallas County. So it's been a pleasure, and I've worked with some of you all in the room, Zachary. And so I really appreciate the support that each and every one of you all have given. Commissioner Price, thank you very much for the population. Thank you. Well, we want, we want to thank you, and especially when you talk about those you know, the commissions. You were, you were around here when um, AgriLife, uh, at that time called Agri Extension Service, was really on the chopping block. Correct. And uh, I think that there were a number of us, uh, there were a couple of us left, but uh, there were <clears throat> people who said, basically said that you know, the value is kind of transient. We really don't receive the value. And I just really appreciate the way you guys banded together were able to show your value uh, <clears throat> to Dallas County. And I really appreciate the fact that, you know, as the resolution said, you reached out to the urban community. I think we think of agri-life, we think of it rural, we never think of it in terms of urban centers, and you have done a lot with young people and this community to uh, to drive it home, your value. And so I, I just want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In terms of the next resolution, Dallas County Health and Human Services and Nurses and Support Staff. <laughs> the resolution reads that where Dallas County Health and Human Services <coughs> maintained unwavering commitment to health, safety, and the well-being of Dallas County residents, and whereas the 2012-2013 flu season began earlier than normal and peaked with two pediatric deaths in Dallas County, and whereas multitude of residents seeking to acquire flu vaccine prompted the, de the department to hold flu shot clinics in various locations and ultimately led to the request from the Department of State Health Services to offer vaccines to residents who were not Medicaid recipients in order that flu shots be available to all who desired them. And whereas the necessary response required Dallas County Health and Human Services nurses and support staff to contribute their time <coughs> and energy to meet the demand of those seeking flu vaccines. And whereas responding DCHHS nurses and support staff, along with the Office of Dallas County Security Department, are to be commended for their commitment, professionalism, 
and their service during the 2012-2013 flu season in Dallas County. Now, therefore, it being resolved that the Dallas County Commissioner's Court is hereby respectfully recognized and appreciate the nurses and support staff of Dallas County Health and Human Services for their response of excellence, their commitment and hard work promoting and protecting the health and safety during the 2012-2013 flu season in Dallas County. Nice so move. Second. Accent the fact that this staff here that stand boldly each and every day and on the weekends. Back in 14 years ago, we had a good immunization program. Now we have a great immunization program. The staff you see behind me have been involved in every major outbreak in Dallas County in the past 16, 17 years, from H1N1 to our response every year to getting our kids immunized. And the staff here works again daily, weekends, and even sometimes they remind me that we do have lives. And so the concept is, is that this staff, in terms of their commitment to ensuring the immunization of children and adults, we've been remiss in not honoring them, you know, in the past. And so today I really wanted to recognize, and also I want to thank uh, <coughs> Hamilton, Officer Henderson, uh, for ensuring that our response in terms of getting orderly uh, lives moving, they did an excellent job. But, and also I want to point out that Barbara, uh, one of our uh, nurses, Barbara Davis, uh, gave the flu shots over at the sheriff's department. Basically, she went in that night. I want to make sure we point out that uh, I see a lot of people get it uh, for you a month. But I want to show you this person who got their first time to go at night and give the flu shots to ensure uh, that the sheriff's department staff uh, receive their flu vaccine. So there's a lot of things that go on day in and day out. On the weekend, we're doing the flu clinic, we're doing the immunization clinic. Those who have been with us on the ground, you see us at Antioch, you see us all around in Irving. Uh, so we uh, involved. So I just wanted to recognize them this morning uh, for not just the work they did in this past in this, uh, flu season, but the fact that they do it day in and day out without any fact. Judge, uh, one of the things, you know, it's one thing, uh, I know them all pretty much by the first name I told them I didn't recognize them about their scrubs. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, I, I get a chance to walk through the department. I, I'm with them on the ground at the various locations at the, the Antioch and so forth. And I, I just wanted to, to say to them, thank you publicly as well. Uh, it's, every once in a while, it's, it's, it's good for our employees just to, See us walk through and say, say thank you. But they're there on Saturdays, uh, whatever it takes, they're there. And it's the same group you see in their day in and day out. And they, are, they all have some team in Dallas County. So again, I, I just want to say uh, thank you to all of you. And uh, I think Mr. Thompson highlighted the fact that Sergeant Hamilton, has, regardless of where we're at, the uh, same loop with an HIV clinic or whether we're at Antioch immunization clinic, uh, they always are able to, to maintain the order and to make sure that everything's open. So <coughs> we do have security for our, our, uh, our constituents. Now, the rest of us are okay. Nurse, you know, even, though, even though we go in uh, late at night, uh, we don't need to call us all the health and all the Anyway. Um, well, one also point out the complexity of the shots at the convention that when you talk about 400 people got flu shots in one day, these are 400 shots that they're administering. Back to school immunization, you can count, if you count 400 people, you're almost talking close to 1,000 shots in a cumulative day. So I want to talk about the complexity that this staff is involved in and the specificity that they offer to this, this county. A lot of people talk about immunization, a lot of people talk about the give flu shots. That's amazing. I know what they do. Thank you for what you do for Dallas County. And you know, for the long hours that they stay over there, I had the opportunity with Commissioner Price and in the Irving uh, Immunization Fair that I have the opportunity to work with all of you for the last two years. Goodness gracious, the, long, the lines were long. Mm -hmm. You know, the hours were long. And you know, at the end of the day, you all were there smiling. 
you know, speak in different languages, uh, do your job the best you can. Uh, so congratulations to all of you and thank you uh, for the great job that you do for our citizens in that
from 9 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Now, therefore, be resolved that the Dallas County Commissioner's Court is hereby proclaimed Thursday, February 7, 2013, as National Black HIV AIDS Awareness Day in the County of Dallas, State of Texas, urges residents to commemorate the occasion by joining local, national, and international groups to express support for this day and the initiatives to prevent the spread of HIV AIDS in the black communities by participating in planned events and assessing and utilizing HIV AIDS pre prevention treatment and support services available in Dallas County and our so Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Judge Commissioner, I, I want to accent the fact again, Marissa, Felicia, Lucy, Rashonda, uh, again, some eight years ago, when I know Rashonda took over as the leadership of that department, and this team that she and Symbol have been the go-to in terms of HIV surveillance, testing in Dallas County. I want to be very clear, now there is funding for prevention, and before there was funding for prevention, this staff has taken on the extra duty of not just surveillance, tracking contacts, but they were also doing prevention. And we received the medical mobile funding to be able to do testing out in various areas. And so this staff has taken on additional duties, uh, unfunded duties, to be able to do testing in areas. And so now with the $5 million that are in this area, uh, I hear people say that Dallas County is not, it's not enough. Dallas County has done more than anyone in this state to address HIV AIDS uh, prevention in, in Texas. And I stand with the staff uh, weekly. Uh, they're part of the prostitute diversion program. They're testing every weekend. They're out every night doing testing. So we know, again, what they're doing, and we appreciate it. The other factor in this is that <coughs> we read in the resolution over 60% of the new infection by African American women. Uh, what we're really looking at is over 70 to 71 percent is what we're seeing here in Dallas County specifically that are African American women. So when we start talking about HIV and AIDS, and we focus a lot on rural AIDS, and I find it amazing, but in terms of African American Latinos, in terms of the new infection rates we're seeing, this is a population that we have to spend more prevention dollars on. And so that is really the, the charge on a federal level and even on the state level, of how we're going to reach African Americans and Hispanics in terms of this issue. Uh, because when you look at men, MSM is being number one, African American men, MSM number two, and then number three on that order is African American women. Something has to be done. So the focus, uh, while we're doing testing on February 7th, the national focus really has to look at why are you seeing more African American women infected by HIV and AIDS. And so, um, you know, it, it kind of disturbed me when I hear a lot about World AIDS Day, and then we leave out the fact that the new infections <coughs> are African American women, and everybody gets silent on that. So I just wanted to bring that to, to uh, the court's attention. And I think that has to be the driving force. Um, again, uh, I, I want to thank the, the staff again always on the ground, late in the evening, uh, going into some areas that uh, <clears throat> some of us, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not making light of this, this whole security thing, but let me just tell you, I'm going, in, going into some areas, I've gone into some areas with the staff that, uh, but for the staff, when they're going into those areas, uh, but the fact that they were in the areas, we were presented because there's a different charge in terms of accountability that causes us to educate in a different manner than which we've done previously. The dollars are shifting. They're not shifting. They're not going to be dollars around treatment. The dollars are shifting toward education. And that's what this staff continues to do and has been doing. And then again, six days a week, whatever it takes, Saturdays, I've been to uh, presentations and seen some demonstrations that are interesting. Uh, but, but they do whatever it takes. Uh, I know the, the bishop was talking about on Sunday uh, that God meets you on the level and in, in, in parables and talks in parables so that 
communicate. Because how to communicate above your head. Uh, one of the things about this staff, uh, when you're out there and they're doing uh, uh, presentations, uh, <clears throat> they present on a level. But you definitely understand that the, that the people that they're talking to can understand. And so I, I just want to say thank you to them. Thank you for countless hours that I see on the ground. Thank you for all of you for the, for this community. I think Mr. Thompson puts it in perspective. We published that piece. We disseminated that piece to the faith faith community. The other Irma Rangel and Dr. Michael Green got no response. So during this Black History Month, some of us who are on the speaking level, we're going to get a chance to talk about that. The data is there. We published it out, talking about the curriculum changes in this session of the legislature. We've got to do something different. And I still don't think there was anything out there. If it was a different kind of, quote, terrorism, we could understand it. But we don't see this as terrorism. We all of a sudden see this as just But on the other hand, Commissioner, I think that one of the, the bright <coughs> Is, is that we are, you know, uh, igniting people. I mean, the young students, you'll see the presentation. And I'm, you know, I do want to say that I was very impressed. They were here last time. You all were, um, you know, presenting the HIV numbers. And they were really touched. And now they're thinking about taking them to the school, to the PTAs, to the students, to the testing, which is something <coughs> that we were looking for. So, hey, while it's been hard, and, We'll continue to work hard. And thank you for all you all do as well with the Prostitution Diversion Initiative. I know you're an instrumental part of it, and I look forward to working with you. And we will not be silent. Goodwill. 
Born in Tersaka, Texas, he moved to Fort Worth in 1956. After living in several southern states, sharpening his awareness and developing his commitment to serve others, he graduated from Pasco High School in 1958 and pursued higher education at TCU, North Texas State, and Arlington State Colleges. And whereas he moved to Garland in 1984 to open his first restaurant, Cafe Maria. Shortly thereafter, he worked for El Chico, opening his first restaurant on Davis and Beckley, and serving the company for 27 years. He later partnered to start the Hanna restaurant at the same location, serving for over 12 years. The restaurant still stands as a community icon and beacon for all races and people of very political persuasions and political parties. <coughs> and whereas he has served in local lines and rotary clubs, as, and was elected president of the Dallas Forward Restaurant Associations for a combined total of 20 years. He is a recipient of numerous community awards and received much recognition from the Knights of Columbus. Whereas Mr. Benson, as an ambassador of goodwill, contributed in kind and financially to Dallas ISD, Wilmer's Hutchins ISD, and Quest School students for enhanced cultural and educational experiences. Whereas he, as a member of Cathedral Santuario de Guadalupe Catholic Church, he and his wife donated the ninth foot Baldwin Grand Piano to St. Cecilia's Catholic Church, the only such piano in the diocese. And the gift was solicited as a special appeal to St. Cecilia, the patron saint of music. And whereas Mr. Benson and his wife of 41 years, Pifi Caballero, have one daughter, Gina O'Brien, two granddaughters and one great-granddaughter all residing in the city of Dallas. His hobbies include enjoying all genres of music and playing the piano. Now, therefore, be resolved that the Dallas County Commissioner's Court does officially proclaim and Herbie gives a special <coughs> recognition to Mr. Sam Benson for his dedicated professional and personal services to Dallas County citizens and its youth. We wish him continued success and good health in the years to come. And I saw that in success. Mr. Betts. Thank you very much. It's good to see my friends this morning. Nice to be here. Appreciate you inviting me. I've got part of my family. My son-in-law, Mark O'Brien, many of you know. My daughter Gina. And we're all enjoying our great granddaughter, who's two and a half. And my longtime brother, Joe Tate. And one thing I've enjoyed in Dallas and in the Dallas County area, there's so many opportunities for people everywhere. It makes our city a great place to move to from other areas and be a part of. And I want to thank all of our politicians for giving their lives to our city and how much you've done for us. And in this community, we're such a diverse community. We have people from all over the world living here now. And we need to take these young people that come in when we're in business, be friends with them. If you know successful people that are in your business, take the children, go introduce them to these people. They need to know examples of our community. And again, I thank you very much for inviting me. And thanks for the opportunity to announce. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and I, I've got some more concern. I've generated just a, a 
notified this back as this morning that I generated to uh, Ms. Bear. I got I want to total complete on that on that uh, on that particular project. So now that I know it's gonna be February 14th. Yeah. Okay. So those are the questions that went on the other Okay. No, I don't know that was because it's gonna be 14th. Talking with Doc, uh, 
but we got you know we got a full parking garage that is just spent, and then it's not as though citizens in Dallas, in Dallas town haven't paid for that damn garage. I don't, don't know anything about the city's finance, but my point is, it's standing vacant, and it may cause for some <coughs> rolling security to watch the cars, but at the same time, you know, it looks like it's about four or five hundred parking spots. Right. And we're talking about the menu. There's also still plenty of space at the Chevron's lot across the street on um, Commerce there. And, you know, it's a paid lot, it's a private lot. We don't own it, but there's still plenty of space over there. And, um, but so there's parking in the area. There's a parking in the area. We just had challenges on those two mornings, Monday and Tuesday mornings when they jerked it. Thank you. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Uh, you know, 20, uh, no, 23 who are voting on that today, that is a true up of the budget within the grant money. So, pursuant to our contract with the Fed, like we have to use the money over and pay the financial cost for it. It's a different discussion on a different day we'll discuss. How, how to manage our seat monies under the new parameters of the 125% of poverty and all of those things. But for today, we don't really have a choice. We, we've already spent the money to get straight to that design. So, uh, all right, so uh, any further discussion on here? Um, hearing none, all those in favor? Hi. Hi. I'm Bill Schreiber. Briefly, I do want to recognize, you know, in today's agenda, we approved several appointments, our appointments to boards and commissions. And I do know that two of the representatives of Commission District 4 are here with us today. The first one is Mr. David Gutierrez, you know, which is representing District 4 in Metro Care. And the second one, Mr. Michael Amen, you know, who will be a representative for District uh, 4 in the Trail Board. I want to thank you on behalf of all of us, you know, for your service to Dallas County. And I don't know if you know there are complete here today, but I know that as we started to reappoint you know, different members of the community, I, you know, it's no pain, glory here, and we really appreciate it on the all of us. For Judge Commissioners, I am one of county judge recommend the approval of the Ask Not Dallas County Day of Service. The little judge wanted to share anything about the present county judge today. I believe there were 10 mayors that showed up. I think there were 11 mayors that showed up uh, along with Commissioner Daniel. This is an opportunity for each city in Dallas County, and I think every city has a, uh, a really, I don't know where they are. <coughs> to do a service project on Thursday, it's November 21, 2011. The day before the 50th anniversary of the tragic assassination of President Kennedy. The, the, the day of service will be um, uh, in honor of the last legacy of the President. And it's an opportunity for us to give back to our communities and to, to uh, uh, show the world the diverse, strong um, community that, that uh, Dallas County is. Uh, doing no small parts to the life and legacy, the ideals and the achievements of President John Kennedy. So, look forward to working on that and facilitating that uh, for each city in any way that uh, my office can. And, and also, the PIO will be helping facilitate those. And, and uh, that's even put each city project on our website so that citizens that city can, can easily get uh, to the projects and join. Um, I know the com commissioners will be taking a leadership role in working within their, the cities within their districts. Um, also, our local uh, CEOs and leaders of Martin Hospital is in the city. Dr. Ralph Batt at Home America, he will be participating in this time. Um, you know, Wells Fargo, the Chase Bank, some other large companies will all be participating. It should be a, a great day for giving back to our community. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Item 2, Juvenile, recommends ratifying the JCMS grant application submitted to the State Criminal Justice Division and approves submitting grant applications to CJP for the Mental Health Court and Drugs Court 
residential drug treatment centers, and family violence intervention programs. Item 3, Sheriff, recommends the continuation of the HIDA program and approval of the MOU with the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. Item 4, IT, I'm going to come back to item A. Let me just read through the rest of it, and then we'll talk about item A. Item B, recommends approval of a personal services contract with Boston Ribbon and Computer for Survey Administrator. Item C, recommends approval of a professional services contract with Mock B for SharePoint Implementation and Integration Services. And item D, recommends approval of the TechShare Dumoulin Case Management System based in 2013. Resource sharing and then the 2013 Master Local Agreement and the who came to the Texas Conference of Urban Counties. <coughs> item 4A, request consideration of salary adjustments for various staff included in your briefing. Uh, you had a very lengthy briefing on this item. Um, I'll ask uh, Mr. Victor to give us a 30 second update on that. Uh, <coughs> BFL lands, any questions you have before we move forward on that? Um, yes, sir. The, uh, the item 4A is the request for IT. Uh, salary salary exceptions based upon the, uh, uh, the salary survey that's typically done by human resources in the last fiscal year. This is the DA we're looking at to actually uh, address, uh, I guess, the DA we're looking at to make sure that our staff are paid relatively competitively as far as the market. DA we're looking to stabilize uh, the uh, the, the staff pay as much as we possibly can. Obviously, I want to recognize that the court is, uh, is the one that basically determines how much investment is actually made in every area, the other functional area. Uh, however, we just um, uh, the study, the salary study done by the county HR, as well as just uh, based upon some of the data that we've been able to, or are collecting and have been able to collect, we think that this particular investment is necessary at this particular time. <coughs> And uh, well, uh, Dr. Taylor, we have discussed about the county and the office of HR uh, conduct a salary <coughs> study for IT and uh, addressing those hard to fill positions. Um, can you elaborate about that? We did do a market salary survey on the uh, IT. Uh, Positions and not unusual. We found that you know our positions are are, are not competitive. That's true for I do, but that's probably true for pretty much all of your salaries uh, in Dallas County. If you went to market, we find that we are not competitive as far as our salaries uh, are concerned. You can it's true for I do as well as the other. Well, I asked well, specifically. I, asked, I I generated an email very specifically, on the point, and I really don't want to do a lot of discussion until I get get that information. And Commissioner, you have requested that information yesterday afternoon. I was in the dentist all afternoon, but I'm working on it. So. Uh, no problem. I'm just and I and I guess what I'm just saying, my colleague, uh, you know, without access to that information. A lot of time to discuss this until we get until we get that in front of you. And I agree with Commissioner Price. I mean, we have thought about you know doing it in a broader fashion. So, in my opinion, and I always have said that if we're going to do it for one, we have to do it for everybody, uh, rather than select which one of them. <coughs> Once we, I see that's a good information that Commissioner Price requested. Put the study out be more than happy. And also, I would say that based upon uh, some preliminary discussions with the uh, court members, I did basically go and actually gather some uh, terminal information as far as some of the other counties, like six counties that are large by the us. So I do have that information. I'm certain. If you would allow her, if you allow her to add over to the doctor, thank you, Dr. Taylor, so she can include it in the information. Yes. Mr. Taylor, you're not stating that, that IT is similar to a clerk position because we do pay more in the clerk positions. In other words, if you look at the majority of our staffing across the county, it's clerk. It, it, it's clerk. Would, would you agree with that? The majority of the employees of Dallas County hire can look at clerks, if we look at uh, GSO, DSOs, right. they are underpaid or anything. I understand that, but you're not. <laughs> you don't see a distinction between IT staff <clears throat> and clerk staff. From an HR perspective, Commissioner, uh, no. no and, and, and the reason, 
Yeah. May I explain why? Sure, go ahead. The reason why I say that, simply as an HR director, is uh, you know, my um, position is to basically provide the court with data on all of its uh, employees. And the goal of the county has always been to do everything it could to try to pay a competitive wage. Uh, to employees, whether they are at the top of the ladder or whether they're at the bottom. They still have to live and pay bills and things in the county. So I answer that strictly just overall as your, uh, as your uh, HR director. In terms of certain positions uh, being extremely difficult to fill, uh, IT is one of them. We have Matter of fact, about seven years ago, uh, we identified hard to fill positions. IT, that's one of the category of jobs. Public uh, works. Public works, nursing, uh, forensic sciences, uh, a lot of the auditor positions. So we have about 12 different category of jobs that were hard to fill seven years ago. They're still hard to fill today. And so I'm not by any means saying that uh, IT, in terms of them having uh, positions that they were having difficulty recruiting, uh, that is definitely uh, the case. But it's also the case for other positions that we have in the county. Well, I understand. And, and Dallas County will never pay higher than their accounts. And I understand that. But I guess what I'm saying is there's no, there's no other department across this county that affects every department in this county, like IT does. You know, and if you don't have those, <coughs> if you don't have the salary structure and the pay benefits to attract those individuals that are capable of doing the job with those skill sets, then the entire organizational structure, I think, suffers for that. We, we did that in public works. We made those exceptions, and we addressed those issues. And, and, and I don't disagree with the uh, commissioner. Again, that's what I want to do in writing so that we can lay it out so that everyone can see. But you and I happen to have the history. <clears throat> I want all my colleagues to have the history number one so that we make it. doesn't mean that I don't support it. I want, I want the history laid out so that we make the argument as we did this morning in civil service on another position. We need to be able to talk about the the, the, the import of those positions in the organization. And I agree with you. You know, the, the fact is, you know, chances are we can do without a club position here and there. If we lost an Oracle administrator, I mean, that's a reason that they work 24 7. That's the reason they're on call. Because that, that system goes down, we're, we're, we're in trouble. I, I recognize so that's the reason this court. Uh, uh, Dr. Daniel, right before Dr. Daniels came on, <clears throat> that's the reason this court gave IT that provides to give those individuals to be able to work at home 24, almost on 24 7. So they're on call. They understand. So, no, I, I agree with you. <coughs> the I just think we ought to have the information so that we can justify the rest of the system. What's going on? I'm going to your point. Is that it is a system and how the IT staff fit in that system should be to find those criteria and identify how, how do we make those decisions so that it's fair for everybody across the board in the that receives that particular position. And certainly what I'll do then is I to the court is to make sure that Dr. Carter has this information not not only we have the sports that try to raise things uh, for comparison but also the information as far as uh, you know, what's some of the other, uh, some major, of the major, major, uh, I, I'm going to add that you kind of kiss that microphone a little bit here. Uh, I know you're accustomed to speaking yes. to everybody. This is yeah, I'm just saying, so. I, I certainly, we will make sure that Dr. Taylor has that information. Certainly, we are, uh, uh, as well as the information that, that um, some of our assistant counties are actually facing. Our, our, some, one of our biggest challenges is, uh, is not so much necessarily competition from other counties, but actually from the private sector. Uh, so those are, that's one of the reasons why we basically use the certain calculations from the RA, a lot of head uh, technologies, uh, salary uh, study as well. But certainly we'll make sure that Dr. Taylor has that information for the consideration provided to the uh, commissioner's court. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Well, and on that, just to help out a lot of it, I think what I hear all my colleagues saying is they're open it's, to looking at this, but by no means is anyone's mind made up they want to look at, at the data. I think Commissioner Tanchel is right that IT is the way we get our information, and you have to have information to run anything. We want to look at the data. Where does 11% turnover compare to your counterparts at the city of Dallas, the DISD, and the surrounding counties? Yes, sir. Uh, when you say, well, uh, we're losing a lot of people with the, to the uh, public private sector, um, I, I think it's one thing that, that we all need to understand is it is a given. I see Lincoln Monroe out there uh, with the DA's office. I thought I saw Heath earlier. He so it's a given. And that the big law firms in downtown Dallas pay more than our DAs are going to be able to pay. And you know, a DA handling that big case, that's pretty important too. Yes, sir. But what we're going to have to look at, what we're able to do is we have an excellent um, you know, DA's office, and I think we've, we've got a, an excellent IT office. Um, we've got an excellent DA's office. We're able to attract um, at, at, at rates commensurate to what other people want to work for the government, you know, work for. Um, people in that office. If we're talking about having to compete with Google and AT&T for, for people, then the questions I'm going to have are um, how is that saving money over doing the Denton, Collin, Harris, Bear, uh, Travis, Tarrant County are doing if they're not paying those high wages to attract the people? You might make the argument to this. You might say everybody else is paying $100,000 for a position. We can either hire Cyrus one to do that position for us at three hundred thousand, or we can pay one hundred twenty-five. That might be an argument, but I'm not there yet on why it is one department. Because you can make the same argument in the DA's office. You could say we really need this one lawyer, but he won't work for us for less than three fifty, and he makes a half a million dollars in the private sector. Plenty of lawyers that make multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars, but we don't pay that to our DA's. Well, that's what we got to look at and let that data drive our decision. Yes, so everybody's, you know, you know, tie that data dealing with IT to your clerk, is what I'm saying. Yeah, and I, I think what I'm hearing Maddie saying, and this is also the lawyer who what I'm hearing Maddie say, which is absolutely the correct answer, is that she treats all employees in, through HR. That's um, I mean, the same. <laughs> We can, if I can tell them the information we gather and the jobs to distribute support. Bring this item back. I have five public works, five day recommended one day extension for the ID, IQ, engineering services under the current terms of pricing confirmed, identified, and agreed. I have five B <coughs> recommended execution of the project specific agreement with the city of Lancaster for the body of the new road NCIP. I have six purchasing, six A recommended. <coughs> That's based on that addendum and some other information that I've added to public works I'm going to, but that will not be on, that will not be on the next week. Uh, we got, got the briefing on it, but I will not, I will not have it on the court over the next week. Right. The information that I've added. Okay. 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 I have six purchasing, six A recommended approval of the price adjustment from CT International and Red Med Medical for vaccines loaded in the briefing. Item 6B recommends the bid for the purchase and installation of commercial flight type rackets from Bay and Dishwater fish to be awarded to Pasco Broker Bridge Incorporated. Item 6C recommends Simone yeah. construction as the lowest and best bid, meeting all specifications for the award for the demolition and reconstruction of a new single family home on Crystal Drive in Long Springs. We do have a speaker on this item, but if you'll allow me to just finish the briefing item, we'll come back to the speaker on this discussion. Okay. Item 7, Planning and Development, recommends approval of the schedule and allocation of fiscal year 2012 emergency, emergency solution grants. Funds is outlined in the briefing. Item 8, Commissioner's Court Administration, recommends approval of an MOU with Avalon Correctional Services for the lease of a 10 acre tract of land on Langdon Drive. And item 9, Budget. Yeah, I'll do one comment on that. Yes. And I appreciate the Commissioner Price taking the lead on that for that 10 acres out there. You know, as we look at closing down what formerly was the Wayback House, you know, when we set that up, it certainly we made the that thing off of Lemon, was it Lemon? Yeah, it's off of, that's correct. You mm -hmm. know, we put them over at the Detroit Springs, the van. And we did that because 
we had an option. We could either make it to where they had nowhere to go, similar to what's taking place here, or or we could have 10 or 14,000, depending on how many sex offenders are released from prison coming back to our community, 10, 14,000 a year, we could put them back in the community with no supervision whatsoever. 10 to 14,000 individuals, not That's sex right. all individuals. Uh, yeah, right. okay, okay. Okay, but they're housing 250. Well, no, the tiles are too thin. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. At, I'm glad you got that long. No, well, not not here. Well, let me let me get that. And okay. I, in fact, I just got a text from Miss uh, Dickerson from the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. We, we have 225 beds over there. Right. Of the 225, 223 of that crime, only 94, okay. 94 are sex offenders. Okay. And where do those individuals go if they don't have some place? No, no, I, I, I agree. That, that's it. But I, I just don't want it to, to well, appear as well. Right, they can do that that amount. In other words, at, at one point, we were housing some from other counties that had no place for them to go. Well, we, we were. And I think so, too. We were. <clears throat> yeah. with my, I, I agree. But 10,000 offenders in the, in the Dallas Fort Worth area are returning each year. Right. Okay. okay. Uh, in Dallas County, I think uh, according to Texas Department of Criminal Justice, we got about 500 that are coming back each month. Right. Each month. And what Avalon had to do, we said, I mean, the court tasked me with this, <clears throat> that, uh, with that, that we, we find a, a, a location. Now, the location is challenging <coughs> because city ordinances uh, have that prohibition on distance between schools <coughs> and, 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 and we have, and we have basically accounted for that, even in the unincorporated areas. So they said with 10 acres that they would, that they could be you know, up to 500, 500 beds. Uh, since Whitmire uh, is basically, as I understand, this session of the legislature, Want to require all counties to do what they're supposed to do in terms of taking their reentry plan. And uh, the one that is the prototype for the proposal of Dallas County is, is identical to the one that's in El Paso. Because we are beyond the transit line, they have agreed to come in and provide for transportation plus. Uh, Mr. <coughs> Michael, under the direction of Mr. Moore, has, has basically negotiated on uh, the fact that they will put in the uh, water, water uh, sewer, as necessary to the project that's long overdue, plus a, a, a second uh, uh, exit uh, out of that Langdon Road facility, which is long overdue. Uh, they basically agreed to do that. And uh, we are, we're, we're, we're moving, moving forward on a point here. So the point I want to make is that if there's not a site for sex offenders to be released to in Dallas County, right. then they go into the neighborhoods. Right. Oh, I agree with you. There's no supervision whatsoever. I, I, I totally agree. So there's some people that, you know, really upset that, you know, we're going to set up a site for <coughs> sex offenders out there. Well, they could be in your neighborhood or they could be supervised at, at a central place until they're integrated back into and, and we heard this same argument as you know commissioner we, we heard that argument we set this up years ago uh and uh, nothing we did not have any issues uh the text uh, the department of criminal justice uh cscd uh, has basically managed that 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 uh, population and we have not had any issues or with regards to it so uh it, it was uh, it, it, Good solution. Okay, so too, um, and there's two options, Mr. Heiko, in the briefing. You know, can you tell us, you know, why this is important and why these options, you know, make it very, a very good contract for that? Um, uh, Commissioner, um, as Commissioner, Commissioner Price said, um, I took this assignment under the direction of Mr. Martin to work with uh, Avalon and um, we find their general counsels here, as well as the CEO, in case we have any further questions. However, um, I became so excited about this project because for a long time, as you know, we've been attempting to develop here as the landing road and um, budgetary reasons we've been unable to do so. And I wanted to do this project and given what they were willing to bring to the table, um, I took it to uh, Public Works and we sat down with Public Works <coughs> and we tried
trying to logistically figure out how to get the solid down instead of <coughs> win win to both Dallas County in terms of getting those infrastructure facilities, which the price mentioned being water, wastewater. And the second point of ingress and egress into that area, uh, as well as then assisting Avalon in recouping some of the costs by extending them at least for perhaps 40 years or more at a nominal cost. And so the project needs to go through and we're waiting for more engineering to get uh, final and hard numbers and we'll bring this matter back to the court to develop with that, that information. But um, as Commissioner Ken Trell said, given an alternative, I think it's a win-win for Dallas County and for Avalon. At no cost. Yes. Correct. Yes. Yes. The final piece to that is we will be selling debt. So <coughs> as soon as yes. that happens, they will have no place to go. So. And Decker is on bar. And, and keep in mind, Avalon is the um, <coughs> only um, in, in the state. Uh, we were the last acquisition uh, with the Wayback House. Uh, they own one in Tenth County, they own one in El Paso. They are, they are off Travis County. You did look them out of Travis County as well. So they they on them all. And again, sort of with my session of the legislature said that <coughs> each county is responsible for its residents as they return. And uh, it's my understanding that he is going to be uh, very clear about the responsibility of each county. This, this provides a, a real opportunity. Additionally, I think Avalon is here and it's going to high goal. We went and met with them. Uh, there's some other interest uh, with regards to this facility. And uh, I think they've secured that. We generated a letter with regards to that. Uh, and I've uh, shared it you know, with, with Mr. Martin. And uh, we're, we're moving forward. And we're following all the rules from all of these which is important as well. Right. Yeah, e e even, in the, even in the ETJ. Yeah. Even in the ETJ. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Thank you, Mr. Hyde. Thank you. I have a couple of travel bring-ups. Elections uh, for Sabrina Roberts, Dan School, the 25th is pulled to attend the future voting system symposium in D.C. on February 25th and 28th. And uh, bring up the Sheriff Luke Valdez to attend the Jail Advisory Committee and TCJ at the meeting in Austin, Texas on February 6th and 7th. Uh, myself and Mr. Hype will also be attending that. <coughs> and Judge, I conclude your approval then. Perhaps. I want to go back to the, uh, to the speaker on the uh, housing. I want, I want, I want, I want uh, uh, Ms. Brown to, to, to lay it out. <coughs> I, 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 I agree with the recommendation of the department, uh, given the history. So, Ms. Brown will lay that out for the court. Thank you, uh, Judge and Commissioners. Uh, item 60 on the briefing agenda today is a recommendation to award um, two uh, demolition reconstruction projects for the city of Chief Program to other than the low bidder. Um, the information that's provided in your briefing document, um, I do want to make a clarification to that. Um, <coughs> that were filed by um, two previous projects by an air conditioning company. I was able to confirm with that air conditioning company yesterday afternoon that late last week those meetings had been cleared. So I wanted to have that information for you all. Um, the concern that's also laid out though in the briefing is the concern with the delays and the hardship that causes on the recipients, um, the homeowners, who are having this work done. So based on that information, um, the purchasing department with the concurrence of CBG moved forward with this recommendation to go to the second look at um, an additional cost for both projects in total of $3,500. Um, by state law, when we make a recommendation to other than the low bidder, we're required to notify the low bidder so that they have an opportunity to speak to you all. We um, made that notice. Um, and uh, the uh, owner of the company um, has decided to speak to you all today on this issue. Um, so if there are any other questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Thank you. Will Bales please read the rules of decorum for speakers? All commissioner courts attendees are hereby advised that this meeting is conducted in accordance with the provisions of the Dallas County Code. 
section 74 and 71. Visitors and registered speakers are to preserve order and decorum at all times. Personnel, profane, <coughs> and slanderous remarks are not appropriate and will not be allowed at any time during this public meeting. Any and all applause is to be kept brief in observance to time constraints. Destructive visitors and or registered speakers may be removed and are subject to the penalties provided in the State of Texas Penal Code Section 3813, 4201, and 4205. Registered individual speakers are limited to a maximum of three minutes, and the maximum discussion time on any one of the topic is limited to 30 minutes. And since it's on our agenda today, our first speaker will be Mr. Robert Muse. And Judge, I'm just going to go ahead and add, I'm not starting the clock, but I need to add minutes to the clock. <coughs> yeah. Mr. Muse, if you would just state your uh, name and address and then begin you know, speaking. When you hear a series of peeps after three minutes, just finish your, your sentence, please. I'm Robert Muse. I'm going to some second by home. And your address? I'm at uh, 2400 Golden Boom and the Soda Tech is probably 490. Attention. Then 5115. Go ahead, sir. I will say, uh, Texan Home has worked for Dallas County for the last over 14 years during the house. During this time, we have completed the houses and Time of completion without any complaints <coughs> or problems. Uh, you know, uh, first of all, when they give us the house to go ahead, uh, the family have to move out, the electricity wires have to be removed. This takes time. TXU move when they get ready. They will <coughs> tell you that it will take from 10 to 21 days to remove the land. This is the lazy job. Dallas County and the insurance, you might remember, they figured over a uh, language in the policy between the, uh, Dallas County and the insurance company. This went on for almost 30 days. This delayed the problem. And I don't know the reason why, but it takes, from the time I submit my uh, uh, draw into uh, Mr. Mackey, it takes from three to four weeks before Texan Certified Home can receive their money in the bank. Texan Certified has to pay up front for all their material. In uh, four months, I mean four weeks, is a long time to wait for a draw. About the lien, Chaplain, uh, I contracted them to uh, install AC unit. They would not connect the condition uh, so I could get inspection. So I had to hire an electrical company to hook up the condition. Uh, the electrical company charged Texas certified on $180 per unit. I paid the electrical company, but when I I took the $180 out of the proceeds of uh, Chapman uh, AC company. Well, when I did that, they filed liens against the house that they should have done. Uh, well, anyway, since that time, I paid uh, Chadman $365 to uh, release the liens at that time. Uh, and I'll deal with them later. About the cabinet, you mentioned in the letter that I received, uh, I, I have a letter here from the uh, cabinet company, the Texan Certified Home, paid up front. So there couldn't have been any deal left at uh, Texas Certified Home. Mrs. Brown, she forgot to uh, deduct the days it rained, the days that the uh, THU delayed, the time that uh, the drawers were late. I feel that to take two houses from Texas Certified Home is wrong. Due to the long time I've, I've built houses for Dallas County, haven't had any problems, uh, then to come up and take two houses away from me, then uh, I don't think that's right. Now, to uh, uh, Mrs. Brown, I feel that she knew this in uh, three years ago, that she was gonna, wasn't going to give Texan certified home 
we, we done the college. Why didn't she tell us? I wouldn't have, uh, Texas certified home, wouldn't have spent $3,200 for work to come, $3,000 for liability insurance, and $1,200 for, for your degree. <coughs> she knew this. And her, I don't know why she didn't deduct the rain. These houses were started in the rainy season. And uh, I completed them as quick as I could. But, and Mr. Mackey, which is a great, uh, he's superintendent, he was on the job site every day. He knew that the ladies, he knew how to heat up a uh, TSA theater. So, thanks. We're over the time, but you, you raised some questions. I do want, I'd like to know the answer to that. On the 90 days, do we deduct rain days? Um, Judge, Shannon, let me yes. yeah. Judge, the, uh, the total day figures that uh, yes, you can have a seat. seat you know, thank you. Sir. We do take into account. Uh, <coughs> we have the, uh, a clause in our contract for liquidated damages. In the event there are days that are not associated with inclement weather or, or some sort of work item that you know, working with on for that's not the contractor's responsibility, we will grant days like that. Uh, forgiveness, so to speak. The days that Ms. Brown has in her briefing memo show you the total amount of days it took from the start of the project to the end, regardless of whether there are complicated factors. As a point of, of, of reference for that same two-year period that Ms. Brown has in her contract, for all the other contractors who, who didn't work but on poor in the same weather conditions that is certified, they took an average of 90 days to do their work. Uh, for his projects, it took 124 days. So they had the same the same level playing field or same same conditions. Uh, the other factor is that two thirds of our clients are elderly, and they have all participants in the program have to make arrangements to live somewhere else for the 90 to 120 days. And that we felt was just an undue burden. I, I I understand that, and, and everything that you're saying makes sense, but. I'd like to look at, if somebody could pull for me and give me the days and the days that it rained and what the actual days were that it took the person. Because, you know, for instance, the weather in today, if I start a house two weeks before he does and I have two weeks of dry weather and he starts a house two weeks later and it rains for two weeks during a time when, you know, there are things, obviously, you know, there are things in the building process that you can't do in the rain. But if he gets caught just at the wrong time, then that's something we, we can look at. I'd just like to see it. I hear what you're saying. I don't want elder to get, if, if the facts are when all things are equal, we've got one group that can get it done in one in nine days, and one group that, you know, for whatever reason, takes 120 days, and we've got elderly people making arrangements for themselves. Absolutely what you're saying is making sense. I just, well, since he's brought it up, I'd like to listen to it. But, 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 but do the history, though. Well, I want you to do the history of what he's done over the last 14 years. And I'll see you know, over the last 14 years, he has performed. <coughs> and that was the trend that we saw up until the last two years. Yeah, yeah. He, has, he, has, he has performed. I've had no, no, that is happening for this. And he's exactly right about the quality of the mm -hmm. Right. So, mm -hmm. so we've got a person performed for 14 years, good quality of work. Last couple of homes we had. No, the last couple of years. Last couple of years. 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 The last last four homes. homes. Two homes. Yeah. The last couple of years. And he shows the tracks. So I want you to lay, lay well, it all. Right. Yeah, lay it all out. And, and all the projects. I want to look at all the lay projects that are out, or all the lay issues that are outside of his uh, school. We'll look at each home completed during that time period in the, the rain days. But look what that advantage does. I mean, it's not different than we doing better for. Well, we, I mean, it's, 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 all, it's all basically the same. Yeah. Right. I'm not at this point disagreeing with the staff recommendation. Okay. Just for a little back. But no, I agree. And I agree with you. She should have it. Thank you. All right. Um, we have two more speakers. Um, uh, our first of the, the two remaining speakers is Mr. Jamar Osborne. Mr. Jamar Osborne. So Sean Bradman was on second up tomorrow, but it's not on. It's tomorrow, Osborne. Yeah. Okay. Don't, don't see him. Okay. Uh, Mr. Richards, uh, Mr. Richards, chair. Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> Trick me. Benny Jeffords, who will to you next. I haven't forgotten his word. Okay. All right, Mr. 